Everybody's a suspect! Coming to get you, Barber. Knock Knock is a 2015 horror thriller directed by Eli Roth and it stars Keanu Reeves, Lorenza Izzo and Anna de Armas. This movie is a few years old guys so there's going to be spoilers in this review. A devoted father helps two stranded young women who knock on his door but his kind gestures turn into a dangerous seduction and a deadly game of cat and mouse. For those of you who don't know this is a remake of the 1977 thriller Death Game starring Colleen Camp who also makes a cameo appearance in this film. Now when you read the synopsis of this film. Is this film every guy's fantasy or is it every guy's nightmare or every guy's fantasy turn nightmare? The situation that Keanu Reeves was in um, was a situation that maybe a lot of people fantasize about but never want to see through and maybe that's why a lot of people wanted to see this, this film because they wanted to watch something that maybe a lot of people fantasize about whether it be male or female or both it's something that we would all think about. It doesn't have a big cast so the acting in it was good. I think at the beginning of the film maybe the first half uh, by all the three cast members, the main cast members, the acting was great. I thought I was really invested in them but I think as the story progressed the acting got a little corny. I can understand why it changed throughout because the story progressed but I preferred the acting in the first half of the movie than the second half. I think the characters were interesting because you've got these two girls who are coming to the door knowing what their intentions were, knowing what they wanted to do and then you've got Evan who doesn't know at first, he, he's thinking okay I'm being genuine, I'm going to help these girls out and get them on their way but as they're trying to seduce him he finds out what they're trying to do and then he has to decide for himself do I want to see this through or do I want to just talk the talk until they have to leave when the Uber driver comes? It's a fantasy that you can tell that he's got in his mind but he doesn't want to act on it until they make him act on it. We knew he was a devoted father and a devoted wife as well because at the start of the film you've got him introduced with his family. He's a very loving father and he's a loving husband as well but at the beginning with the two of them in the bedroom you can tell that they don't get a lot of bedroom action because of the, the family life that they have and obviously their work life so you can see or you can guess for yourself that he might be a little bit sexually frustrated. We know that the girls saw him at the beginning of the film because they mentioned that at near the end of the film they've been watching him so they know how frustrated he is, they know his situation so they've taken advantage of that but I think the question goes to Evan at this point in the movie is, is anybody going to know or Am I ever going to get this opportunity again? Again, it's a question that maybe he wouldn't just ask. It's a question that a lot of people would ask. Is it something that I'm going to get away with? Is it something that I'm ever going to get the opportunity to do again? He made the wrong decision, of course, because he cheated on his wife. And I think that if it ended with that, with what happened at the end of the night and he woke up in the morning and they were gone, but then they ended up blackmailing him, then he would be responsible for that and then it wouldn't look good on him. This is where it gets a little messy though and this is where the story didn't really mesh out the way I thought it would or thought it should. The girls come back for more but only this time they sexually assault him, they attack him and they they vandalise the house. So then this is now turning on its head into Evan's favour. It now looks like they've sexually attacked him, they've sexually assaulted him and vandalised the house. Because of this, I think the ball is now in his court, if he survives it obviously. The ball is in his court that if his wife finds out, he can always say they attacked me, it's not my fault. And that's what it looks like at this point in time. But then the tables turn again, you've got a death in the film now, something that we didn't expect. Lewis, I think his name was, he came to the house and he, he died, albeit by accident, but they covered it up. And they were talking about things like, yeah, we'll get such and such, I think it was Ryan or something they said, we'll get this guy to cover it up, yeah, he'll have a laugh when he sees this. So they've not, this isn't the first time they've done it, they're professionals, they've done it before and they'll do it again. And then they go into the whole uh, point to Evan to say to him that you're going to die. So the table's turned in their favour again, they're going to kill him, they're going to get away with it and cover it up and get away. So now he's thinking, oh no, they can do what they want with me again. I think stupidly or unstupidly, the tables turn once again. They decided not to kill Evan and just say they're teaching him a lesson and then they've left him. Now this puts the ball in his court yet again because at the end of the day, he's been sexually assaulted, he's been vandalised, he's been buried up to his neck and his wife has just arrived home. Albeit, the sex that he had with that girl is on Facebook now and everybody's saying on their Facebook, unfriended, unfriended, unfriended. But until they find out what actually happened, they're going to think he's a bad guy. But then when he explains to them, and he's got a good alibi, when he explains to them he was forced to have sex with this girl, otherwise they were going to kill him, they killed 
Lewis, his friend, and they vandalised the whole house as well. So you can see that he's been assaulted, his friend's been killed, and his house, been, his house has been vandalised, and his dog's been stolen as well. So he looks completely innocent in this whole affair. And my neighbours just started to cut down a tree. At the end of the day, obviously the girls were there to teach him a lesson and they got away. But at the same time, you've got this guy who's been sexually assaulted, but before that, he had sex with two girls and got away with it. He might have not got away with it if all they done was had sex with him, leave and blackmail him to go to his wife. But, but because of what they'd done after it, he's then got away with it. I guess the moral of the story is, if your wife and kids are away on holiday and you're in the house yourself and two beautiful girls come and try and seduce you, don't do it. This is another movie by Eli Roth, similar to The Green Inferno, that's very underrated. I don't know if it's because of um, the story itself, but I feel like this movie is very underrated. It's another movie that got a really bad rating, and then I watched it after I heard about the bad ratings, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. I think it's also one of these movies that you can view differently depending on the opinion that you have of the three main characters and what you would do differently. So what are your guys' thoughts on Knock Knock? Like I said, there's going to be difference in opinions on this one, but I really liked it. But I'd like to know your thoughts down below. Who's there? As always guys, thanks a lot for watching, thanks for subscribing, I'll see you soon, bye bye.